Okay, guys, I'm here today with Gordon Ryan, huge honor for me. And guys, uh, Gordon's gonna go over here, the front headlock attacks, which is the new instruction that he's filming. And uh, super excited to learn from him. And Gordon, I see you doing that all the time, like always going for... I see you starting on bottle and trying to snap, snap the person the down head. and yeah. go to the front headlock. Most famously with Keenan and obviously the ADCC yeah, finals yeah, where yeah. I guillotined them. Uh, but yeah, the, the whole premise of this instructional is to play a dilemma game between exposing the neck to either guillotines, darces, anacondas, strangles from the front and front headlock, uh, or if you're part of the fence, using the threat of the de uh, using the threat of the submission to hit go behinds and get behind your partner and attack your partner's back. So obviously we have all the attacks from turtle position, uh, but at the same time when you're attacking from turtle position, you have one strangle hand and they have two defensive hands. So we either have to break through those defensive hands and grip fight adequately to get strangles in place, or if your partner's defensive hands are so uh, are so precise and in tune that you feel like you can't get through the defensive hands, then that's okay. Then we just use the threat of the submission to start going behind our partner. And as you start to go behind your partner, the only way your partner can follow you is to put hands on the floor and circle, and as they circle, then submissions come in. So if we're in a static position and he's down in front head on his knees in turtle position, and I try to start fighting in, if I can get submissions here, that's great. But if his defensive hands are in place, and he, I feel like I just can't break through those defensive hands from here, now I can use the threat of the submission to start going around and taking Bernardo's back from here. And if I start circling and Bernardo goes to circle with me, as I go to circle, I can come off my knees. So the only way he can circle is to put his hands on the floor and physically circle with me. And as he does so, that brings his defensive hands out of place, and we can switch okay. into submissions, and we can use a dilemma game between strangles from the front and getting behind the elbows to take the back, depending on where his defensive hands are. So wait a second, so you understand that my defense is to keep my both hands on my neck, so you kind of force a way for me to post my hands and then my neck's gonna be free and exactly. then switch the neck. Because if I go to circle and I'm up on my feet, you can't follow just like this. Yep. You yep. have to take the hands down and really be able to follow and me that's with the hands on the floor, and then I can either go behind you if I beat you, if your hands are on my hands for too long, or, as you go to follow, then the hands come down, and then I can punch my strangles in. Got it. And uh, Gordon, I see you doing something all the time where you play guard, and you are always like chasing the guy, and then you come up and boom! Is that it's also, of course, it's crazy related to the- Yeah, of course. So the second we go into any kind of guard play from here, I like to start pushing my partner back and away. Okay, so if he's stalling, most of the guys that, that fight me at least, and our guys on our team know that we're dangerous, so they kind of stally from here. So whenever I see this, I start pushing the shoulders back, and if I see that there's no, there's no pushback reaction, and he, I put, and he allows me to push him back, so if he lets me push him back, now from here I can just go in and I can start double-legging him. Sure. So what he has to do, the second he goes to push, I go to push in, he pushes back into me. And then we switch from a post to a collar tie. And now we can just come up and just football our partner's head. Man, that's incredible. And now we can either fall down into guillotines, or if we feel like there's no struggle right away, we can just start heisting into front headlock positions, where now we can play our front headlock game with guillotines, anacondas, etc., yeah. and then back takes, obviously. It's such a great way against the stallers, right? Because they're kind of like walking backwards and start pushing them, they walk forward, yeah. and then when they walk forward, you... Yeah, you play a game, it's push-pull, push-pull, and the guy on top is, doesn't know where he's going, it's a lot of energy. And so it's, it's actually better for the guy on top to just engage you so you can't play a push-pull push, push game. And that's the trip. But then when he engages you, then now you're doing jiu-jitsu. So, and oh, that's yeah. what I wanted in the first place is to actually have the guy engage so I can work on my jiu-jitsu and sweep or submit him. Right, that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Yeah, so guys, as you can see, like Gordon has a whole like headlock attack system and the, which involves guard, involves when he's on top. And he's shooting an entire structure all about that. So it's going to be at bgjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And uh, thank you, Gordon. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.